and MF1 OTC. Yo, Darius Pitt here, and we're talking about the skills you need to have to be a successful filmmaker. Disclaimer. This mainly applies to directors, producers, can be applied to some cinematography stuff, and acting, if this does not apply to you, I apologize. If you were to ask different people how they made it or how they got noticed, you're gonna get a whole bunch of different stories. Some people had family that were already in the industry. Some people got insanely lucky. Some people got noticed on the film festival circuit. Some people got noticed online. The point is everybody makes it in a different way. You don't know what way it might happen for you, but if you develop these skills, you definitely increase your odds. Now, some of you guys are probably on Honestly, not gonna like what I have to say, but that's all right. We will get through this together. Let's get into it. Elasticity. When you're starting out, you might have to work jobs that you're not crazy about. You might have to edit promotional videos, work at news stations, shoot corporate commercials, shoot wedding videos, do videography jobs, shoot conferences. Now, while these jobs might not sound sexy, they keep the lights on. But let's face it, it could take you a few years to break into the industry or get to some point where you're at least generating an income or a profit off what you're doing. But meanwhile, the bills, they're still coming in every month. When I got out of film school, I planned on making a feature film, getting it into Sundance, getting distribution, and launching my career just like my idols so I went into a lot of debt and I made my first feature film and the rest didn't happen like I planned we did not make it into any of the top tier fests that I planned on getting into and that's not to say that we made a bad film we made a really good film and there are actually a lot of great films out there that don't get into some of these top fests because it is ridiculous ridiculously competitive out there. It's not a bad thing. It's just I mean it is what it is I had to take a lot of jobs that I was not excited about to keep the lights on. But if we really think about this, even a lot of people in Hollywood have quote unquote day jobs. But in Hollywood, most directors and cinematographers rely off of the income from shooting commercials. The studio films and the income they generate off that, that's just a bonus. That's just the cherry on top because that work is not really guaranteed. One minute you're in and then the next minute you're out and they're courting another director. If you go into this thing with an open mind, prepared to take on other jobs that you may not be crazy about, you stay elastic, you stay flexible, you will be leagues ahead of everyone else, myself included. Business savvy, it's tough finding investors. You know, it's kind of like that whole vicious cycle of getting your first job where you can't get your first job without experience, but you can't get experience without getting a job. You usually gotta use your own money to make something first, and then once you make something that makes money, then it's a little easier to find investors. This is where the business savvy comes in. Filmmaking by nature is very risky, but the idea is to manage the risk. Start small, do minimum viable products, slowly work your way up to the bigger budgets. Managing means shooting in two or three locations instead of 11 or 12. Managing means not writing car chases or westerns or things that cost a lot of money. Another way to manage is if you have $10,000, instead of shooting one film, you make five $2,000 films. This reduces the level of risk with each film. This is called shooting a slate of films because by shooting more with less, you're reducing risk. Because if the first one doesn't make it, you've got four other chances. You can practice this now, Ian. If you've got 500 bucks, try to shoot two films with it instead of one. Try to like stretch that money out. Money does not equal quality. These are two separate words. And the sooner you divorce these two words from each other, the better because the great thing about film is there are a ton of ways to make something cheap look very expensive. Know how to learn. Learning how to learn is the most important lesson that you will never learn in school. There is a laundry list of programs to learn in technical skills and story structure and film grammar and branding and marketing and business practices. You gotta pace yourself, break things up into smaller, more manageable tasks, consistently do this over time and you'll be surprised at how much you learn. I was never taught the business side of independent film. I was never taught After Effects, Photoshop, marketing, understanding YouTube learning how to shoot without a crew. As a filmmaker, unfortunately, the learning never stops. So you need to have a system for learning. Technical expertise. It's not uncommon for a creative person not to have any interest in the technical side of things, but this does not work for filmmaking. This is getting its own category, sorry, but I'm not sorry. Half of the job is understanding the tech. I mean, you gotta understand the tech to unlock the creative possibilities. Now, you don't have to be an expert in every aspect of filmmaking as long as you understand what you need to know so then you can continue learning as you go along. Let's also not forget that the more you know, the more money you can save. And there are those few instances where you end up shooting stuff by yourself. Better know some stuff. Story analysis. Obviously, not everybody can be a genius writer, but everyone can develop the skills needed to evaluate and analyze good work. When you're starting out, 
it's really hard to find good material. I mean, the writers around you are just as new to writing as you are to filmmaking. So more likely than not, you're gonna have to write your own scripts. You better know how to write. If you do get to work with a writer, you need to have an understanding of how to evaluate and find the strengths and weaknesses of a script. You need to understand story structure, the fundamental principles of drama, character development, the difference between an action and a dramatic action, dramatic irony, like you need to understand the basics. If you don't know this stuff, there are three books you should definitely read. Story by Robert McKee, Screenplay by Sid Field, and Save the Cat by Blake Schneider. I'll leave links to these books in the description section. Also, read tons of scripts, break them down, read, 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 practice, practice, practice. There are a number of places you can find scripts to read. IMSDB.com is one website. Also, watch tons of movies, watch your favorite movies over again, break them down into their various story elements, practice, 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 and don't just do this for good movies. Do it for bad movies, too. Like, there's just as many lessons to learn in both. In a bad movie, if something is not working story-wise, why isn't it working? Film grammar. Film is literally a visual language. How you move the camera, the way you move the camera, what angles you choose, when to go for a close-up, when not to go for a close-up, what's in the frame, what's not in the frame, this all has to do with film grammar. Your use of it determines whether you're going to take your audience on a riveting emotional journey or whether you're going to lull them to sleep. Presentation and execution are everything. It takes a little while to really, you know, wrap your head around this language. It takes some studying, it takes some practice, it takes some experience. There are a few ways to learn it. Watch movies with the sound off. It forces you to focus on the visuals and how they fit together. Watch the behind-the-scenes commentary of directors and cinematographers for movies. They talk a lot about the motivations behind shots and the perspective of the characters and what they were thinking, when they were thinking, how they did what they did. And also, watch a lot of Hitchcock. This guy was like a master of film grammar. Comb through his movies, break them down, study them. Gold mine for that type of thing. Communication. You cannot be a wallflower in a filmmaker. Like literally those those two things, they I'm, they literally don't go together. Like communication is non-negotiable. You gotta be able to communicate and communicate well if you're gonna do this whole filmmaking thing. Oh man, communication is so huge. You gotta be able to communicate in all types of different situations. And of course there's a few things we can do to work on that. Learning other people's jobs will make you a better communicator because you'll understand their vocabulary. You'll be able to speak their language. Learn a little bit about everything. Send Cinematography, lighting, editing, sound recording, sound design. Read some books on acting, take some acting classes. If you want better performances, it definitely helps if you understand what goes into creating them. Directing Actors by Judith Weston. Great book on acting. Talking with investors, that's another one. You may not have the luxury of having a producer who can go out and find you money. You may have to get out and find your own money. You gotta be able to pitch your ideas to investors in an exciting and engaging way, and you also need to understand a little bit about their vocabulary and what they're looking for. You gotta be able to speak their language too. They usually wanna hear how you intend to make them money if they invest in you, and saying that it's just a great story is not gonna cut it. You gotta do research. Look up the trades, follow the trends, watch the box office. Branding and marketing. If somebody's interviewing you about your movie, you gotta be able to like communicate and engage and get people excited to go see your movie. Like you're the face of your project. Even on YouTube, you guys wouldn't bother watching me if I couldn't present the information in a clear and engaging way. Critical thinking. You can't afford to be too precious about your work. Sometimes you gotta murder your babies. Sometimes you gotta cut that shot that you love so much because it's just not working for the story. Or you gotta remove that scene that was your favorite scene because it's killing the pacing. You gotta be willing to remove anything to make the film better and sometimes this really leads to some really 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 heartbreaking choices but it really does make all the difference. Talent. Talent is not actually on my list. Let me tell you a little something about talent. At first I thought talent was everything. I don't think that anymore. I've seen really talented people go nowhere and I've also seen some not so talented people just blow up because they were great hustlers. Talent's great, don't get me wrong. I love talent, everybody loves talent, but talent goes absolutely nowhere without the other skills to go with it, without the hustle to go with it. If given the choice whether I would prefer talent or hustle, I will pick hustle any day because hustle really beats talent when talent don't hustle. Now, of course, if you've got both, that's, I mean, that's awesome if you've got both, but eh, you get what I'm, you get what I'm trying, you, you know what I'm saying. It all boils down to this. The more you know, the more opportunities you can create for yourself. Luck and talent will only take you so far, but if you focus on building these skills, there is no limit to what you can achieve. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I also do one-on-one -on -one chat sessions, so if you're interested in something like that, bring your filmmaking or YouTube questions. I will leave a link in the description section where you can get more info on that. I do believe that's all I got for you, deep it out! They would make a total of six stops on this traverse, collecting samples from large rocks,